everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank. I'm Dan. And coming up today, oh, we're talking about stuff. Yeah, we got stuff to talk about. Stuff. <laughs> That's stuff. Kind cares? of what we do. Who cares what's coming up? They care, it's, Frank. It's just stuff. The listeners care. It's just stuff, Dan. It's all stuff. <laughs> uh, we'll, 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 what we will we'll be, be talking about some current... Uh, some uh, well, it's not current issues that are coming up. It's uh, in light of current issues, some arguments from the religious folk Is about it, religious freedom and that kind of stuff. How the hell do you talk to these people? Yeah, that's the question. Yeah, <clears throat> so we'll get to that so, uh, later in the show. And sorry for my voice, everyone. Yes, I'm still sick. Yeah, you're 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 not a hundred percent. Cold yet. number two for this summer, and I'm I am baffled. Yeah, at this it's point. A, it's a it's a, a virus riddled world out there. Yeah. And bo- boy, howdy! If one more person tells me to take vitamin C or zinc <laughs> or echinacea or Saint John's Wort or whatever any of them are, uh, I'm going to start recommending arsenic for colds. <laughs> no, I'm just sick and it's tired of totally it. Totally natural. It's uh, it's a hundred percent nature. Ah, oh, it's just the worst. Oh, you need an emergency packet. It's too late, and right. it really doesn't do anything for you anyway. Right, so. and it was never vitamin C in the first place. That was that was a mistake <laughs> that they made. It was never vitamin C that was the one that was... But boy, it keeps people so healthy. Boy, it sure does. That's the thing they don't know. You know what it does is it keeps them spending the, the appropriate amount on their health. And you can't yeah. be healthy unless you're spending the right amount of money. Yeah. Otherwise, well, I mean, what are you supposed to do? Just sit around and be healthy without spending? Well, the vitamin C... Industrial complex. <laughs> exactly. Uh, do you want to go first or me? Uh, I can go. What do you got? Um, well, I have a story that hails from Harvard. Harvard University? Harvard that, University. Those hallowed halls. <laughs> where, where everybody talks a little. Isn't that how everybody has a little, little accent? Yes, that's perfect. I, th- I think you've nailed the upper, Cambridge. A little upper crust. Uh, <laughs> oh, their uh-huh. chin doesn't move when they talk. Um, no, uh, apparently uh, Harvard has been, uh, or the Harvard Crimson has been, which is their school paper, uh-huh. uh, has been doing a poll of uh, entering freshmen uh-huh. uh, for the last little while. And they're noticing a trend with uh, their freshman classes which is they are getting more and more agnostic and atheist uh, every passing year. Mm. Uh, and this year, would you like to take a wild guess at the number as to the number the of percentage? agnostics? Because they are broken down separately. I mean, you could go for the combined number. I could do the math real yeah, quick. Yeah, we'll, we'll go combined total. Agno- people self-identifying as atheist and agnostic. Uh-huh. In the fresh, in the incoming freshman class at Harvard. Yes. Ah, I'm going to go. Let's see. National, uh, national. It's pro- it's probably about yeah, eighteen to twenty percent. I'm going to say youth. It's much higher, probably almost thirty percent. I'm going to say educated or uh, or legacy people who go to uh, Ivy League schools. I'm going to give it. 45. Uh, it's a little high. Okay. Uh, 38%. Okay. So I, I feel like I was in the range. You were in the range. You were you were getting high through through your, your process. Yeah. You were getting a little on the high. I was skewing side. high. Um, amongst uh, millennials at large uh-huh. throughout the country, American millennials, so that's ages 18 to 29. Uh, agnostic and atheists uh, total to be about thirteen percent of that group. What? Um, that that's can't according be right. to uh, the Washington Post. No, I'm sorry, the Pew Research Center. Uh, I'm looking at a Washington Post story. Uh, and uh, so, but what's interesting about this thirty-eight uh, percent is that the uh, Catholics make up seventeen percent. Right. Protestants make up seventeen percent. Uh, other is 12, so who knows what all that includes. Right. But it does not include uh, Jewish, which is 10%, Hindu, which is 3%, Muslim, which is 2.5%, 
or Mormon, which is 0.4%. So that, <laughs> that one student did get counted. Okay, good. Um, or maybe two. Um, so... I just think... So that figure must... The, the figure that you gave for the millennials must not include the nuns. It must be only atheists and agnostics. It's not asking for... Um, you are you are correct. The um, they, they do address that in the in the article how because the figures that I've seen, if you include the nuns mm -hmm. among the millennials, is super high. It is super high. Um, so that would probably be included in that thirty percent that are other. Right. Uh, What's interesting is perhaps. that that means that the uh, the figure the thirty eight is that what you said thirty eight percent yeah that's uh. And that's not including nuns. That's not including just no, no. affiliation. The, that's the way they ask the question, just you're absolutely right. Atheist and agnostic. That's yeah. huge. They actually uh, now I am using two different uh, polls. Right, one the the one about the U.S. millennials is from Pew, uh, and the one uh, that's specifically about Harvard uh, is uh, clearly their own poll. Right. So. <clears throat> They're not exactly comparable, right? They're not entirely right. uh, because they did ask the questions differently. But um, but yeah, it is it is interesting to uh, to kind of look at that and see how <laughs> high those numbers are. Now, clearly, like you said at the at the beginning, when, while you were still guessing, uh, we are talking about very educated people. Um, and when you look at these numbers in general, um, you see religious belief go down typically with. Uh, income. Mm -hmm. uh, so high, people uh, who come from families that make more than $125,000 a year, um, they are yeah. less likely to be very religious. Right. Um, but uh, as far as like ranking how religious they are, oh yeah, I guess Harvard's poll does have that kind of information linked to it. Um the only group that really said that they're very religious was the one Mormon who was let in. <laughs> um, everybody else, uh, they're just really not terribly religious. The the, right. the percentages of people claiming to be very religious are, are pretty low. Yeah, I, I, I imagine it's a hell of a lot of cultural Catholics and cultural Jews and cultural whatever. Yeah. You know, I, yes, my people, my, my family are, are and, Episcopalians, but just sort of... And that would the definitely the the Jewish um, percentage that definitely lines up with probably cultural, um, just because they they mentioned in the article that the Jewish uh, population being at around ten percent at Harvard, um, that number is not shifting or changing hmm. through the years. So it's hmm. pretty much kind of locked in year after year. They have about ten percent of their their student population that claims to be more or uh, d Jewish. Uh, but the the Protestant and the Catholic and the atheist and agnostic are just going all over the just place, really crazy, shifting around. Sure, yeah. So there you go. I, you know how much I love these yes. articles. Yes, so. you you like the numbers. Um, I'm going to go to Kuala Lumpur. Oh, the capital of Malaysia. Ooh, yes. Um, not regular Asia, just Malaysia. Uh, this is Malaysia. Yes, bad Asia. Bad Asia. <laughs> Uh, as you'll learn, uh, so I learned an interesting thing uh, reading a, uh, a blog post about this um, on Religion News, uh, the Re Religion News Service. So, it's a wh wh what's your sense of ma the Malaysian landscape in terms of religion? I would say that it well, it's a Muslim nation, right? It is correct, uh, and I would say they're very Muslim. 61.3% 60, uh, of the population is, is Muslim. Ah. Lower which, which than is, I thought. Yeah, lower than I, I would thought have it, thought, too. I thought too. it was a Muslim nation. Well, here's why you think that. Okay. Uh, let me just sort of tell you a couple of laws that are there. Oh. First of all, uh, you, may, you are allowed to have a Bible. That's not a problem. Mm, okay. Uh, but you may not have one in Malay. In their language, oh, uh, it is banned in that language, and okay. uh, and if you sell or give away or import a a Malay language Bible, you will go to jail. Oh, okay. 
So that's an interesting thing. But you can have it in English. You can have it in English, but just for personal use, not for distribution. Okay. Uh, so that's one interesting law. Another interesting law is uh, that there are several words, uh, but the main one being the word Allah, that only Muslims are allowed to say. Okay. If you go to Malaysia and you say Allah, you are breaking the law. I'm not even allowed to say the word. You're not allowed to say that word. There are several other words, uh, including uh, Al-Kitab, which is an Arabic word often used to refer to, the, uh, to a book of scriptures, including uh -huh. the Bible. Oh. Uh, salat, which is an Arabic word meaning charity. Uh -huh. uh, apparently in all there are 34 words. You can't you use the word charity? Not the Arabic word for charity. You can use, I mean, they, you know, they don't speak Arabic there, so, but you can't use the Arabic word for charity, no. Huh. I can't even say it. No. Don't say it. Well, that's alarming. Isn't it? That's really weird. Isn't that shocking? But, but I can use the Malay word for charity. Sure. That's okay. That's okay. Just not the Arabic word. So the intent... To be charitable is fine. <laughs> it's okay. It's just the word that you apply. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And All you right. can talk about your God, but if you're not Muslim, you can't talk about your God as being Allah. And well, you can't, why would I want to? And, well, and you can't talk about... Because Allah is kind of a dick. Allah... Well, you can't say that. <laughs> you're not allowed to say that. You could say, for instance, well, no, I'm guessing if you said your God is a dick... You'd run afoul of something. That's going to be a problem, too. I'm going to guess that... Uh, well, they don't like what people have to say. They don't. They, well, they like what people have to say as long as they're saying the things that they want to hear. Oh, I guess. Freedom of... That's some kind of freedom of speech. It's funny because uh, uh, the moment I read this, my, in, my like spidey sense was like, oh, Jesus, this means that the Christians are going to have more ammunition about how they're oppressed. Uh -huh. And then I thought, well, there they are. I think every Christian who really wants to feel oppressed oh. should just move to Malaysia. I am fine with Christians <laughs> claiming to be oppressed when they actually are. When it's actually real. When there's real Christian <laughs> oppression happening. <laughs> All right. You're right. Yeah. But when they claim to be oppressed in this country. Right. Uh, shut the fuck up. Yeah. You're not. Go home. You're not. Yeah. You are the majority. We'll be talking about that a little later, but I do like the idea that, like, y yes, Christians are absolutely oppressed. <laughs> it's just in Malaysia. Yeah. And, and elsewhere in the world. And elsewhere. It's not like that's the only place in no. the world where Christians no, 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 are no. oppressed. I will grant them their oppression wherever it happens. Right. I am fine with them pointing it out. It almost <laughs> came out the wrong way. I almost was, I'm fine with Christian oppression, is what I almost said. <laughs> I was like, no. No? I'm not fine with Christian oppression. Right, yeah. I'm fine with them claiming oppression. Oppression. When and where they are actually when oppressed. When it's true. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. So, limits on words. Yeah. That's weird. There you go. Don't Careful when you travel. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, here's another uh, story of people being limited. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, I can't remember if we talked about her story, um, the, the story of a female cartoonist in Iran, hmm. uh, Atina Fargadani, who has been uh, um, sentenced to 12 years in prison hmm. for criticizing uh, the government um, oh. in her cartoons. Uh, she drew government officials uh, as monkeys... And goats. Oh, dear. And so she's, uh, they didn't like that. No. And so she's been locked up. Uh, she's 29 years old um, and uh, cute as a button. Oh, yeah. Look she's, at her. She's, she's a doll. Cute girl. Um, but really stupid uh, that she's being locked up for this. Um, the, um, what was the issue? Uh, do, 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 do. She, she was uh, she was she drew the cartoon in protest um, of plans by the Iranian government to outlaw voluntary sterilization and to restrict access to contraception. Yikes. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound that doesn't sound like uh staying on the easy side of the law. No. In, uh, in Iran. No. Uh however, she's gotten herself in hot water again. Oh dear. Uh for um uh a handshake between her and her lawyer. Oh. Because <laughs> men and women can't touch. Right. And so uh oh, he shook her hand or she shook his hand. And uh, now she's facing charges of, quote, illegitimate sexual relationship short of adultery. <laughs> oh, that's the charge. Wow. That, they, that they're that they getting her with. Here's, here's what I'm going to point out. I've had way more sex than I'm giving myself credit for. <laughs> like, so much sex. Sexual relations. Sexual relations. I've had sexual relations with so many women yeah. that I didn't even realize I was you having sex with. No, you didn't even know. <laughs> it is shocking. Uh, the, uh, yeah, but, 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 you know, Islam. Yeah. They've got it all figured out. There. They do. They do. They, they sure do know how to make sure that their women, uh, I don't know what, shut the hell up. They, they know how to make sure that their women don't get to be people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're no, good at that. They're, they're really, really good at that. So that's what she's facing now. Amnesty International is on the case. Uh, and uh, who knows how much good that will do. Mm. Uh, but uh, they are uh, watching this and trying to advocate on her behalf. Mm. Um, apparently, that 12 years is going to get uh, added on to, is what everybody's saying at this point. Right. So I thought that was worthwhile. Yeah. Okay, are you prepared to be truly horrified? We're not going to be funny for a second, because this one's just terrifying. Okay. And awful. All right. Uh, I'm going to take us to India now, where uh, there's been... Okay, you know, when I was in India, I was t I talked to a lot of people about things like their caste system, which, theoretically, Gandhi sort of outlawed. Right. But it's still very, very present in many people's lives, in most people's lives. It, right. There's still an untouchable caste. There's still a, the the highest caste. Like it's still there, right? Uh, and you're you really they really don't think in terms of like climbing out of their caste. It's it's a right. it's a it's very sort of in the DNA of that culture. Huh. Well, here's uh here's some proof of that. A a a young man in a in a small village in India. Uh, ran away with a woman um, who was of a higher caste. Oh. They ran away. They eloped. They were in love. Uh -huh. uh, and the village council, these are not elected men. These are, uh, these are just the village council. Okay. How do they become the village council? I, by being important. By being of the upper caste and by oh. being important. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, they... Decided that this was a uh, uh, this was absolutely against the law, and found him guilty. Oh, uh, of that. Okay. The punishment for which was that they sentenced this man's two sisters, ages twenty three and fifteen, to be raped. What? That's right. That's. Okay. All right. Proceed with your story. That's that's basically it. Uh, the the girls are on the run now. Uh, fortunately, they escaped before this could before be carried he out. was punished. Before they, he was punished. They escaped before he was punished. Right. Uh. Now, as a brother of a sister, I can say that it would be uh, a horrible thing. You don't want to see your sister getting raped. To I have that, that he would have to witness and that kind of stuff, or just uh, even just to know know, even happens. to know that it was going to happen and that it happened would be a horrible punishment. Yeah. No, it would. Be. However, right? What in the actual fuck <coughs> is going on over there? That this is okay. Uh, this is these tribunals yeah. um, are not part of the country's legal system technically, okay. uh, according to An Amnesty International, but. They hold the weight of, of you know, the, the current system, of, of, the, of the current uh, cultural system. Well, yeah, if the people support it, I mean, that's half the time that's all you need. Right. Um, wow. Yeah. That is some fucked up shit. So that really, I mean, now, now in sort of the modern world, light gets shed onto, onto these kind of practices. 
My right. God. Yeah. What was like medieval yeah. <laughs> India what, like? What did bar- barbarism look like before we knew about it? <laughs> yeah. When they could fly under the radar. Because this is probably them saying, well, back in the day we would have done X. I mean, India al- already has a real problem with rape uh, yeah. in general. And, you know, they're, they're, the government's not able to address it on, on any sort of uh, uh, useful level. But when it becomes part of the structure of punishment, uh-huh. that's insane. Well, yeah, absolutely. And let's also keep focused on the person who's being punished and not ruin other or affect other lives. Hmm. Right? That, yeah. that are not like okay first of all he's being punished for something that's total complete bullshit um right yeah what they what they found him guilty of what is, they found him guilty of is stupid is, is stupid shouldn't be illegal uh and uh and then they come up with a bullshit punishment right of okay well now it's time to rape yeah that's absurd it's uh it's positively biblical in its uh, <laughs> in its absurdity yeah i mean really how could that still be going on yeah. anywhere? Yeah. Uh, in the last 40 years, uh, just to catch people up, in India, the number of reported rape cases uh, has gone up nearly 900%. Wow. So, what, so I this mean, is good. Yeah, what that people says to me is it. that it's, it, I, I doubt that the number of rapes has changed. Right. It's just that now it's being reported. So right. women are at least empowered enough to re- report to that report. they were raped. That is a that is a a step in the right direction. Yes. I mean uh, that is clearly there are steps left to be taken. Oh <laughs> there are Oh yeah. The journey of a thousand miles has only begun with a few steps. Yeah. They need they, yeah, they yeah, got yeah, a yeah. long way to go. Yeah. Horrific. All right. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um well hopefully this will calm you down. Hmm. Um coloring. Dan, coloring books. Yeah. Would you like to uh, to join in on the latest latest trend in the, spiritual practice? It's the new craze. Oh, my God. What? Yes. Like grown-ups? Grown-ups, yes. <laughs> Zen patterns and designs, coloring for artists <laughs> is one of the titles. Uh, <coughs> mandalas? How do you say that? Mandal- yeah, mandalas. Mandalas. The, like the little star shapes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coloring for artists. Oh, I guess that's the... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Zen patterns and designs. Coloring for everyone. Oh, my God. Says. A fun, anti-stress coloring book. You know what? I've Whimsical seen people design. doing this. Have I've, you? I've seen this. I saw an infomercial like was it that I saw? a month ago. Yeah? Up late, flipping through channels, saw something about, like, coloring book. That they were like... <laughs> And they had, like, all these middle-aged women coloring in the coloring <laughs> book. And I was like, what the fuck? Is this, like, one of those, like, Cartoon Network, <clears throat> Adult Swim, fake. fake infomercial things? Right. And it seemed all legit and real. And you I was expected just like, Tim and Eric to come out at some point? Yeah, and... okay, this is weird. But And then, and then, then I didn't think anything of it, and then I saw this story. Apparently, right now on Amazon, uh, there are uh, five of the top... 20 books on Amazon are adult coloring books. No. Which adults coloring books sounds like a like it's, nasty pictures. Right. Uh but no, it's, it's just all these like uh 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 what what did they call the peacock one? Um I I laughed at what they called the peacocks. Um oh uh mystical peacocks. Mystical peacocks and other exotic animals and plants. What the fuck? Um and so the, the the article talks about or tells the story of this woman uh who's actually stopped going to church because she started doing these <laughs> coloring books on Sunday morning with her daughter and found it to be a far more spiritual and like like it, oh, wow like experience far more enlightening far more stress relieving and i see i can totally get it you know sure i mean i there, have nothing zone, against it you zone out and you just sit there and you just you're moving that pencil or it's colored it, it's gel almost a meditation whatever it's a meditation of sorts uh that that you learned to do as a preschooler mm-hmm. that's uh that's... and now as an adult you can uh 
You can take it back up. Here's a picture from um, a tweet that someone did. They posted a photo. Maybe that's actually an Instagram uh, where she had a picture of her her lovely little paisley thing that she's oh, done. Oh, yeah. But her mug, I love her coffee mug. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> um, so, oh, my yeah. God. Uh, hey, you know what? If it's pulling people out of the churches... I think maybe there's good. something to this. Well, I mean, this ties in in a way to that story that you shared a few weeks ago about church attendance on the decline yeah. in sort of beautiful settings, right? Yeah. And uh, because people find spiritual fulfillment, and spiritual, um, what's the right word? They're speeding. They're speeding. They're feeding their spirit or their yeah. soul or their whatever you want to call that. We don't really have a great word for it as atheists. Sure. But I get what they're saying. Yeah. More and more I get, I, I, I have my own understanding of the word soul. Yeah. Um, sure. And, uh, and you know, and it's, it's, it is an important thing that we need to be tending to. I'm fascinated you know? by this. It's actually, I'm, I'm actually going to be, well, I'm entering a, uh, what is going to be an incredibly busy period of of my life right um having you know just gotten uh a, a film project um yeah up and going so i have my full-time job and i'm also going to be producing a documentary film yeah and so i've had to kind of consider what am i going to do for you know stress relief and like making sure that i'm taking care of myself it's one reason why i think that what, I got masturbation's sick not enough apparently masturbation no, I've tried that. that okay. One, that one doesn't seem to, to fully <laughs> okay. fully work. Um, no, I actually think that one of the reasons that I've gotten sick again so quickly... Is the stress. Because I was really feeling it. Sure. I was really starting to feel it. And so I'm not going to pick up a coloring book, but one of the things that's on my plan is to get out in nature at least once a week. Sure. You know, go on a hike. Get out there. I think and, that's a good idea. And, and just kind of... Take a minute to get away from everything and, yeah. and reflect and, and not, you don't even have to be all that mindful about it because it kind of just does it for you. Yeah. The time. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, considering the story of this lady, uh, feeling like she doesn't have to go to church anymore because of the coloring, uh-huh. ladies and gentlemen, TGIA currently and uh, exclusively recommends that your gift giving this holiday season <laughs> Be ex- be entirely coloring books. <laughs> you want to you want to give uh, gifts for Christmas, but don't want it to be about Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Uh huh. Give your family coloring books. Coloring books. Let them color, and then mm. let them let them think on the world yeah. as they do so. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. Apparently, Michaels. We should uh, we should produce them. one. Apparently they sell like hotcakes. I'm going to TGIA uh, coloring I'm gonna book. Publish. Well, yeah, we won't. We won't actually. It'll be published. The publishing company will be TGIA Incorporated or something. Right. Right. That'd be a good idea. The atheist. The atheist coloring book. No. 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 That's it's, not what you're saying. It's the secret. It's. 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 We. We produce it, but we don't ever say the word atheists, so that all the Christians start using it. It's. Uh, it's the devil's tool to pull them away from their church. Uh, just like. Uh, Lots of uh, koi ponds. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Clouds. <laughs> Any number of things. Just happy, happy uh, imagery. I love it. That's intricate so that they can... Lots. Of, you're right. The pat- <clears throat> Clouds aren't good for that. Mm-mm. Clouds are for the little kids. Yes. We need the intricate... Adults need pattern. Yeah. Mm. So there you go. You could, yeah, you could do um, mosques. <laughs> They have all those like I geometric. Think, I feel like you keep ruining it. Huh? I got I got a good idea about how to draw people away from religion, and you keep injecting religion no, back think, into I it. I think the mosques is the right way to go, though. No, no, no. Because they they love the the, the geometric shit. Yeah, right? the, all the little tiles. But then they're thinking about how religion. How beautiful, Dan! <laughs> how absolutely beautiful. All right, I'm taking us out of this. All We're right. going to uh, Florida. I think is it Florida? Um, yes, well, Florida's a place. Florida. It, it, sh- it will shock no one that this story comes out of Florida. <laughs> uh, but here it is. Uh, oh, boy. A gun manufacturer in ah, Florida okay. <laughs> uh, has created oh, no. what may be the ultimate, the, the perfect American gun uh, for its time. Oh, yeah? Uh, the AR-15 Crusader rifle. <laughs> uh, 
It's it, it's characterized by a few things. The main thing that you'll notice at the first moment you pick up this gun uh-huh. is that on the uh, on on the uh, in the part where the magazine goes in, where right. the clip goes in, is a psalm printed <laughs> on the clip. It's printed right on the gun itself. Oh, on, it's, the, on the gun, it itself. says okay. uh, Psalm one forty four, verse one: "Blessed be the Lord, my rock." Who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Oh, boy. Uh, Ben Mookie Thomas, uh, a former Navy SEAL and spokesman for Spikes Tactical Uh uh, that's creating it, um, said that the creation was sparked when he wanted a rifle that that no devout Muslim would touch. Oh, my God. We'll just rub it with pork and you're done. Quote, off the cuff, I said, I'd like to have a gun that if a Muslim terrorist picked it up, a bolt of lightning would hit and knock him dead. Seriously. Um, All all you need is some some meat. Some pork. What's amazing about this is that uh, he what he has failed to realize, and it's shocking that he's not very well educated on Muslims. Oh yeah, because yeah. usually these guys just really know their stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, got uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, uh, what he doesn't realize is that the Bible is perfectly acceptable to Muslims yeah. and is part of their sort of uh, canon of scriptural yeah. uh, of scripture. Um, it's not taken as whole as holy as the Quran, but you know they use it. Right, they like it. So uh, you have failed, sir. Yeah. This is this will not fend off a Muslim. Marshmallows. Just attach a bunch of marshmallows to it. Why don't they like marshmallows? They're not halal. Aren't they? They uh there's a uh, um uh pork product. Really? Uh-huh. Some some gelatin that comes from pigs. Oh, okay. It's in marshmallows there typically. You go. I know this because I had a Palestinian uh roommate who uh, wouldn't make s'mores who uh we all had cooked uh, dinner <laughs> And he didn't know what was in the really delicious dish. He was kind of blown away about how good it was. Oh. And he goes, what's in here? And he's eating, he's eating, he's eating. And then uh, somebody was like, well, there's this and there's this and there's uh, marshmallows. And he was like, Bleh! oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. He didn't act too devout around us, but we all knew he was really devout. Wow. But, yeah. uh, so uh, I'm going to get back to this rifle because there's, it it has one other feature that I think is amazing, oh, uh, and oh, and and, and not uh, a little, not not a small amount terrifying. Uh, the gun it's a it's a it's a fourteen hundred dollar gun, so it's not cheap. Um, but it's got three settings oh. on the safety selector. Oh boy! So three three settings. You need more than one. Uh, well, or you, two, I guess, on and need, off. You would need safety on and safety off. Right. Uh, I th- this one has peace, war, and God wills it. <laughs> uh, does God wills it shut off the semi-automatic? Yeah, that's what I was function? wondering. Is it, like if it, it goes it into an f- full it automatic, full auto, which it would stop being an AR-15 if it did, but. And also, it would be illegal in yes. this country. Yes, that's right. Huh. God does not will that you have an a well, wow. or rather, the U.S. government does not will that you have an, a fully auto <laughs> gun. I just think that's crazy. They're just <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah. All right. Well. Well, let's... if you guys have any uh, any anything that you'd like to say, if we're if we're crazy for for not liking that gun, you can write to us podcast at thankgodimatheist dot com, or you can call and leave us a voicemail message. The number is. Four two four six 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 eight four four two. Absolutely. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Or also on Facebook, you can search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge. Right. It's we a did closed a- group, so you do have to request to join. Right. We had somebody write into us this week and ask, uh, ha- ha- said he was Googling and couldn't find the Members Only Lounge. It is only on Facebook. Ah. So you have to be a member of Facebook to be able to be in it. Ah, uh, so, keep so the Googling in, isn't going to get you anywhere. Googling might, I don't know, it might, but you're not going to be able to see anything unless you're a Facebook, uh, signed up for Facebook, and uh, and uh, you ask to be a lot in the of group. Barriers for participation. That's right. I don't okay. want. To, I don't want. I'm keeping out the riffraff. Okay. All right. Hmm. 
So uh, do we have uh, do we have some uh, we we we've, we've got well, a patty break coming up. We do. Up. Yes. Uh, this is Pat Robertson. He's uh, he's still kind of up in arms as he uh, as he is wont to do <laughs> uh, about this whole uh, Christians being uh, uh, persecuted mm. legally. Mm. I guess is, mm. is what his real concern is here. So let's let's take a listen. This was founded as a Christian nation. There was no question about it. The Supreme Court, in about an 1892 case, said we are a Christian nation. Now, that was in the court uh, dictum. We are a Christian nation. And what uh, Huckabee said, the criminalization of Christianity. Can you believe that? A hundred years later, uh, 150, 30, 40, how many years it is later, Christianity, the founding uh, principle of this nation, is criminalized. You go to jail if you believe in God and, and stand fast for your beliefs against the onslaught of secular humanism and the uh, flood that comes about with it. It's not a p- pretty picture, ladies and gentlemen, and Kim Davis is not exactly the champion we'd all want to stand up for our beliefs, but nevertheless she did it and she's the heroine of the piece. But uh, there'll be many, many others, and the idea that you have to go to jail, uh, it's just as appalling. She, not a pretty picture, Dan. She's not the hero that we wanted, but she's the hero that we deserved. Yeah. <laughs> you don't go to war with the army what you want, right? What's the deal? <laughs> right. You go with what you got. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious that he's like, uh, ooh, yeah, it could have been a better person. Yeah. It, this could have gone better for us. <laughs> uh, yeah, and boy, that narrative. They just, <sighs> they love it. Yeah, we'll be talking about that a little later. But well, first, uh, we got some uh, some emails and whatnot. Some various and sundry people oh. who uh, who wanted to communicate with us. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'll start in with, a, with an email. Uh, okay. I just finished your most, this is, this is from Mark. I just finished your most recent podcast and thought I might be able to offer a little insight. As you guys come from a fucked up Mormon background, I come from a long history of fish eating, blood drinking, relic revel- revering, holy aerobic performing Roman Catholics. Ah, okay. I even went as far as to spend some time in a Benedictine monastery, but had my own personal realization to the complete and utter nonsense that was faith in general before I took vows. Well, wow. congrats on getting out before that. Wow. Uh, he says, while Martin Luther is not a hero to the Catholic faith, it is generally regarded that without his 25, er, 25, 95 theses and, uh, and the Protestant Reformation, the church never would have held the Council of Trent and created the Counter-Reformation. Uh-huh. A lot of issues Luther brought to light were dealt with, and the church became a more temporal power and spiritual guide. Uh, It became a get-back-to-basics wake-up call for the church and uh, an end to a lot of corruption and vice. Plus, it gave birth to artists like Michelangelo, Raphael, and Bernini who created the St. Peter's that one sees today. Mm. Sometimes your enemy changes you more than your allies. Interesting. Uh, And I think that that's almost always the case. Yeah. Those who oppose you are the ones who define you more than those who agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's part of the problem with uh, with the United States sort of the uh, echo chamber thing that happens here now Mm. with the with news channels that you only watch the one that you agree with already and that sort of thing. Yeah, but Fox News sucks. Uh, Fox News does suck. <laughs> I, I think even I think even conservatives have come around to realize that Fox News sucks. Right. But I, anyway. I, but I don't like M- MSNBC. I'm no, I don't. Any I better? Don't. No, I so don't. So there I you don't. go. I don't. Why don't you? Uh, do you want to play a voicemail for us? I do, Dan. Okay. Uh, this is um, uh, we've heard we've heard from this caller before, and he has just a really nice, funny story to tell. So I'm just going to play it. Hey, Frank and Dan, it's Desert Dave down in San Antonio. I just had a moment of something. It was more like a what the hell was that moment. I don't know if it was dysphoria, if that's the right word. So I've been an atheist uh, for five years. I'm walking through the uh, military uh, base exchange, the little military mall, and there's a very old guy with a Silver Star uh, veteran's hat sitting in a motorized wheelchair and Somehow we got to chatting, and he was telling me how he'd had a stroke, and he talked about his Vietnam stuff. We talked about three or four minutes, and he was just such a sweet old guy. When we finished talking, 
without even thinking about it, I said, you know, thanks for serving and God bless you. And oddly enough, he looked up at me and said, have a nice day. <laughs> and I thought, what the fuck was that? That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, what the fuck was that? That's, yeah. that's so funny. I mean, we, it's so easy to sometimes just fall back into something that, like you used to say all the time. Oh, or yeah. just Yeah. I mean, you on a military base, you're hearing God bless you a lot. Yeah. Uh, probably. And, I would uh, assume. And at the BX, yeah, I, I can see how that would be. Uh, mm-hmm. But I love that he that he was like, uh, yeah, okay, have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you may have been talking to another atheist, oh. and you're the one who said, God bless you. Yeah. That's well hilarious. Done. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, I have a couple more emails to read. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, there it is. Uh, Holden, young Holden, wrote in and said, uh, Hi, Frank and Dan. I was listening to the most recent podcast with Bryce from Naked Mormonism. And was wondering if a few generation, if in a few generations it would be possible for Utah to be a predominantly atheist state. Mm. As you guys have said in multiple podcasts, once a person leaves Mormonism, they are done with religion. So with more and more people leaving the faith, do you think Utah will become a godless heathen state? Or will it just fall back into one of the other 41,000 denominations of Christianity? Just wondering your thoughts. Well, I mean... Well, hold on. Lacking a crystal ball. Yes. I, um, I think you're wildly overestimating the number of people dropping out of the Mormon faith right now. <laughs> uh, Mormons are, if there's one thing they're good at, uh-uh. it's uh, the, you, you know, in a, in, a, in a typical Mormon family, they may lose uh, one kid to atheism, but that's okay. They had 10 kids. Yeah. So even if they lose five or six. I will say this, though. Um, One of the things that has always, from my perspective, done such a good job of of um, keeping Mormon, big Utah Mormon families, you know, Mormon. Yeah. um, is sort of the insular nature of of Mormon culture. Sure. Um, And we're seeing fewer and fewer safe havens for them. That's true. And so I I would say there's a lot of these issues keep coming forward that are you know the the big issues of the day such as like you know um gay rights and mm. now gay marriage and everything um i don't know i i think we could see a little bit of a shift toward maybe seeing more people leaving yeah but i mean who's to say the mormon church is also really good at at um morphing itself mm. and changing not immediately no. they don't do it really quickly they're only but they they they're more than willing to after they're about 20 years behind on an issue right. to kind of figure out a way to make it work. To now. suddenly have a revelation yeah, exactly. about that. Yeah. And so, plus they they tend to be a fairly po- uh, educated group of people mm. as well. So they, they do have certain open-mindedness about some things, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Mormons can be strangely sort of exposed to the world at times um, in really weird ways. Yeah. They, 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 they baffle me. They Mormon, really truly baffle yeah. me at this point. I, d- I don't know that I uh, that I even know who they are anymore. But we won't be seeing a non Mormon dominated Utah for for a very long a time. very very long very time. very very long won't time. happen in my lifetime. No, although sometimes change happens very quickly in yeah. very sweeping ways that you just you, the thing you never knew that was going to come. But I mean that's that's what would have to happen. Right, there would have, have to be, be some really weird thing come along. Right. Because Mormons sure do like being Mormon. Yeah. They hold on to it pretty good. Yeah. Um, one more uh, email. Uh, this one from Angie, who ah. says, Dear Frank and Dan, I love the podcast, I, and I especially appreciate your ability to take a clip that really pisses me off and completely diffuse my anger with humor. <laughs> it helps to soothe, soothe out the rough edges uh, of my lingering religious resentment. <laughs> I have to say, though, I did not realize that you were such accomplished neol- neologists. Oh. Uh, thanks forever for dodecafecta, my new favorite word, <laughs> <laughs> which I believe I came up with when uh, talking to, I don't remember, we were talking about a trifecta and then it was uh-huh. like a quadfecta. And then right. It, yeah. Dodecafecta. Yep. It is a good word. It's yep. fun. Uh, and you can all feel free to use it. Anyway, Angie goes on, as I have a request, will you please tell me what you thought of the Book of, Mor- Book of Mormon, the musical, as post-Mormons? 
It was such an interesting and charming experience for me when I saw it here in Salt Lake recently. Huh. Have you seen the Book of I Mormon musical? I haven't seen it, no. I specifically, I had the opportunity, I could have seen it when I was in New York uh, a, a while back, uh-huh. and specifically chose to wait, because oh. I wanted to see it here. Okay. I thought, you know what, uh, that, this is the venue to see that particular thing, especially yeah. for someone who understands it as well as I do. Yeah, yeah. I was absolutely right to do so. It was a delight huh. from start to finish, and <laughs> they got laughs here, I guarantee to you. That they have never heard laughs on before. Really? Uh, just, well, I mean, first of all, there's an entire song about Salt Lake City. Uh huh. And it's, there's just something great about, like, yeah, you're in the town. Yeah. One of their backdrops is a backdrop of Salt Lake, and it's right. got, like, a picture of Crown Burger and the temple and, like, all of these sort of Salt Lake icons that right. nobody, nobody else in the country understands. Right. That's just us. Right. And there they are in front of us. They're in the, the I mean, huh. I and you can't help but like sort of delight in all uh, know the knowledge that most of these actors have never been here. Right. And they've been singing and dancing about Salt Lake for, you know, this whole tour uh-huh. and now they finally get to experience it. I don't know. But yeah, I think it's a charming, uh delightful little show. Uh-huh. Very offensive to a lot of Mormons. <laughs> Uh, there was a there's an op-ed piece written in the local Mormon newspaper, the Deseret News, written by a guy that I know, a uh-huh. friend of mine. Yeah, a uh, really stupid min- min- move on his part because he wrote this whole op-ed about how it was. Uh, it everyone should be offended by this show. Uh. I mean, and then he included a line that basically said, uh, "I haven't seen the show." But, but I've but I've yeah. listened to it on uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was that's some bullshit right there. Yeah, yeah. Jim. Ooh. No good, Jim. Well, all right. Well, here we are. Uh, are we, we we've been sitting here, we've been I have been musing and, and I was the one that sort of pushed this topic for us because mm. I have been musing on the fact as I listen to the heads that talk, the talking heads blathering on about the whole Kim Davis thing, the uh, the clerk in, in uh, what is it, Kentucky? I guess she's in Kentucky, right? Uh, yeah. Kim Davis? Yes. Yes. So, so the, yes, the Kentucky clerk uh, who, she, you know, she went to jail because she refused to do her damn job. But the problem is that what the what the Christian right, how they talk about this, uh, as Mr. Uh, Robertson pointed out to us before is that this is oppression of christians and she went to jail for being christian yeah and she went to jail for standing up against uh for standing up for her own religious beliefs right. which now they're throwing christians in jail oh my god on npr today i heard someone talking about they're throwing christians in jail for, are there are there lions in these jails for just for being christian wow and are, there, are there heads on pikes? Yes, all over the place. Oh my god! And the, and you know, and then there's the whole thing with like Planned Parenthood, and uh, the, yeah. you know, there's now a, a push uh, to to defund Planned Parenthood. Uh, there was a there was a hearing in Washington uh, in the House Judiciary Committee. Can I tell you the title of this hearing? Ooh. And let's see if you can detect the subtle bias. Okay, that is betrayed. In this title, we'll see if you can get it because it's really okay. it's really subtle. We'll see if you can pick it up. The title of this uh, of this hearing was quote examining the horrific abortion practices at the nation's largest abortion provider. Huh. It's tricky. Let's see where is it. It's um, tough. I know. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, uh, so so <laughs> it's not. This is they're not even trying to hide. Uh, they're they're hatred of this stuff but they oh, are yeah. trying to hide something <clears throat> and what I, and, and and that's what i wanted to get at today was that when these guy you know when when the smart talking heads uh-huh. are talking about these issues they're not talking about christianity what they're talking about is uh you know the the, the courts have changed the definition of marriage uh-huh. or that planned parenthood is selling body parts and blah, blah, blah. And right. there's all of these, there's layers and layers of argument being made. And 
I guess what has bothered me, and I wanted to get your opinion on this, okay, is that it occurs to me that these are not the art that you know. The other side of the on the other side of the thing, when you're listening to the Diane Reem show or whatever, the other you know, there's 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 a liberal person who is attacking these arguments that this person is making, right? But they're not getting anywhere near what's really happening, right? Because the person on the right, all they're really doing is coming up with as many reasons as they can to stop something without saying what they really believe, which is my religious belief is true and should be codified in law. Right. And that's it. Right. That's as far as they really, that's all they really care about. Right. So they call this, so they call Kim Davis a religious, uh, you know, a martyr for her cause because she had to go to jail and it's nothing to do with it. Right. So the question is, how do we talk to people who won't talk, who won't actually say what's going on in their minds? Well, um, I mean, First I of all, do you, we need, I need, do you agree, I, I agree with the assessment? I agree with the assessment. I, 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 I can see the, um, I don't know, um, I don't know how many, I, I wonder about the percentage of people who, 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 who that's what is going on in their mind, mm. right? Because it, it, it does take a certain, uh, uh, sinisterness to uh to 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 truly understand that what they want is their religion codified mm, right? sure because i do think that they uh have i i so their understanding of freedom of religion mm-hmm. um they're perfectly comfortable with that when they live in a in a community that's predominantly christian right because what their understanding of it is is that you're free to be baptist or you're free to be methodist mm-hmm. or you're free to be catholic or you, like like you can even be mormon if you you're really wacky you can even be mormon and we'll let you do that but they're not they're not cool with freedom of religion extending beyond Christianity or perhaps, perhaps, you know, the Judeo Christian world. Right. Right. Maybe they'll allow they're 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 kind of okay. Maybe they're okay with, 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 uh, with, uh, their Jewish neighbors, but they're definitely not okay with their Muslim neighbors. Right. Like at all. No. Um, and so their understanding of freedom of religion is really, really limited and they haven't really tested the boundaries mm. of it very much right uh and so i i I, you may be pushing it a little far but i think that you would be right to push it that far in an argument because that is what it is right and even if they push back and they say no 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 i just want freedom of religion and you you could you could easily challenge and dismantle their argument for freedom of for uh for being for freedom of religion because they're clearly not right right they're not for pluralism right they're not for multiculturalism they're not for they want Freedom. their little community in kentucky to stay the same right right and they and, and what, they don't want the gay people in and they don't want the the muslims moving in they just want or the atheists or, or the atheists who are probably just as bad or worse than muslims exactly they just want their little apostolic pentecostal faith to just stay and to be codified in the law. Yeah. And for all the laws to agree with their religious beliefs. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a scary time for me because when, when pre- presidential candidates, viable presidential candidates like Mike Huckabee yeah. and Ted Cruz uh-huh. are getting up there and they are applauding a woman for breaking the law because that law, the particular law that she's breaking, is in contravention of their religion. Right. They're they're stepping into like how are they doing like Ted Cruz is a lawyer, how yeah. does he not know that by saying I mean he's he's playing a political game right. where he's appealing to a bunch of people who aren't going to be thinking about this right I would say at that level you do have the duplicity that you're talking about yeah at that level at that level but but but, but at the Kim Davis level her fight for freedom of religion is a fight for her religion it's a fight for not for freedom right it's for religion not 
for freedom. It's my religious, my God's word law trumps the law, trumps the law of the land. Right. They're arguing for literal lawlessness. Yeah. They are arguing for the right of Christians. And, and really, if you boil it down, they don't want a Muslim to be able to say, well, my, my religious law trumps the law of the land. No. They don't want, I mean, if you ask because them. Because the Muslims are wrong. Right, exactly. They're not God's people. We're God's people. Right. Or, or heaven forbid, you know, a Satanist. <laughs> well, definitely my, not God's people. Right. Which is, which is why, which is why the Satanic temple is so fucking brilliant. Right. Because they're, they're actually making the argument that we're making on a visceral level that, that the Christians are forced to confront. Right. But I think I think what we need to do, I think we need to not. Here's what I'm realizing. I, in my life, am no longer going to engage my religious uh, uh, Christian friends in arguments about abortion, in arguments about uh, Kim Davis. I'm no longer going to engage that. Right. What I am going to engage is Christian privilege. And the fact that all of these are just arguments that they think Christianity should be privileged over any other belief system. Well, Dan, this nation was grounded, or, or I'm sorry, founded in Christianity. Well, uh, it was that founded, is what they say. Dan. That's absolutely what it they was say. Christian, that's and sometimes what, that's what Judeo Christian. Uh huh. Values only Judeo because we need the Jews because eventually we're going to need to take back Jerusalem when Jesus comes <laughs> again. We just need to keep them happy until Jesus comes back. You know, CNN even uh, even has run ran an article fairly recently uh, uh, that's just qu- asked the question: uh, Was America founded as a Christian nation? This is a question that's going yes, on. Yes, it was. Uh, <laughs> um. You know, it's it's funny because you can find some quotations, a couple of quotations that might seem to uh, to support that. Oh, okay. mostly, however, the quotations that you find are things like you know John Adams saying that this that the American nation was in no way founded upon the Christian religion. Right. Um, yeah, you've got similar quotes from John, Thomas Jefferson and and pretty much all of our founding fathers. Uh, so the arguments that they make are are spurious huh. when they say that this is a Christian nation. Huh. Um, huh. Well, I to to be honest, I have a hard time really caring at times what the founding fathers had to say. Yeah, all I care about is the the reality of today, and yeah. I don't. Who the fuck cares what some guy 200 and however many years ago right. said yeah. Those about guys... what this country was supposed to be? I don't give a rat's ass. I want to live in a, in a secular society. Well, and, it's, and that's right. And, it's right to live in a secular society. Right. And, what, and whatever those guys said, they also said, we're not going to get this 100% right. Yeah. There are mechanisms for you guys to change it when you figure out how we fucked up. Right. Which is how we got rid of slavery. Right. Slavery was codified in our uh, in all of our founding documents. It's, it, yeah. It's, it's 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 spelled out in the Constitution how to do a census. It's yeah <laughs> of, of the slave population. Right. So okay. So yeah, to be a a constitutional uh, uh, originalist. Right. Great. You're into slavery. Cool. Right. Really, really cool, man. Right. Uh, it's not, that's not what it was ever intended to be. No. This, this country is supposed to morph and change. Yeah. And it's supposed to get better. Yes. And the way to get it better is not to say, well, this is how it was 300 years ago. This is how it was 200 years ago. Blah, 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 Who blah, cares? Blah. Wrong. That is wrong. What, what, what matters is the reality of today. Right. And who is all trying to live together in this country now? Right. And the how can we do so seen, peacefully and yeah. with prosperity for as uh-huh. many people as possible? Yeah. And, uh, and we know that we can make it work. We know we can yeah. be pluralistic. We've, we've, we've adapted to immigrant group after immigrant group. The country's changed. It's, it's the, 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 the complexion has changed. The food's gotten better. The food's gotten better. 
you know, it's we've good. become more diverse. That's a good thing. These are all good things. And so for 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 people with different backgrounds to for one of those one of those backgrounds to say no, this is ours. Yeah. And all the other ways are wrong. That's wrong. And they need to be called out on it. Yeah. And 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 I I hate the whole it's it's founding fathers bashing, right? It's like it's it's bi- Bible bashing but with the f- words of the founding fathers. Right. I don't care. Right. I don't care. They don't live now. They they're dead. They we live now. Yeah. And we there's get to also decide how we live. And yeah. So so when you're when someone uh that you know brings up Kim Davis in 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 a way other than how you think about it, don't right. engage that. Just say, "Look, how would you feel if this were a Muslim?" Right. Because they're allowed to live here too. Right. And they've got every min- every bit as many rights as a Christian has. Right. So you can't make a so if you can't make a an argument cogent a cogent argument that doesn't equally apply to a Muslim Right. Or an atheist. Right. You've failed. Right. You're not being American. Absolutely. Uh, so that's what that great conclusion. We we came to something. <laughs> we did it. I'm very excited. I didn't know where we were going to end up on this one. Let's cut. Let's quit while we're ahead. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, if you have anything you'd like to say to us, uh, tell us how we uh, our conclusion was stupid mm. uh, and, and will never work. Please write to us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or leave us a voicemail message. Our telephone number is 424-666-8442. Sure is. Go to the Facebook page, will you? Facebook.com slash TGIA Atheist. Or also on Facebook, you can search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It is a closed group, so you have to wait to be let in. Yes, indeed. Hey, uh, there are new things coming down the pike. Uh, oh. just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn you that at some point we'll have things to say to you. Yeah, but there is one big thing coming up, Dan. That we can talk about now? Yeah, the 200th episode. Yeah. Next week, folks. Holy crap. 200 zero, zero. Yeah. That's where we're hitting. Um, pretty amazing. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to last more than 20 or 30. I know. So Definitely not. Because yeah. we don't like each other at all. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but, um, so, so as, look forward as, to that. Aside from that, Dan. Yeah. As, anyway. <laughs> I, just, I just figured that we, we, we just, we, we, nobody would listen. Yeah. It was clear nobody was ever going to listen. Yeah. Well, right? we, we, what do we have to say that's so <laughs> interesting, right? Uh, but no, it's been it's been wonderful uh, so far with our 199 episodes. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and so next week we'll be celebrating. We have some All yeah we have we have some stuff coming up. Next week's gonna be wild and woolly. Yeah, so we're plugging our next. Yeah, show. you're not gonna want to miss that one. Yeah, for so sure. Be sure to be sure to download and listen to that one. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Mackenzie. For uh, for doing our Facebook page, it's 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 a miracle that she's w- still willing that to do she's, it. Yeah, she's still. How long has it been with Mackenzie now? I don't know, a couple it's, years. It's been a while. It's been a couple. I'd yeah. say it's been like three years. Just, Hasn't she been with us since like can't somewhere be that around long. the first year? I have no concept of time, so I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, Mackenzie. <laughs> You're amazing. And thank you, of course, to the Red Rock Hot Club for still letting us use their music. Because they probably don't know that they don't even realize it at this point. <laughs> but it, they had the same thing. Uh, it'll be good. Uh, Twenty, thirty episodes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's all. All right. right. And thank you, dear listener, for chiming in with us. We sure do appreciate it. Bye. Bye.